Greetings fellow humans, Mad Mark here with another transmission from Met Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard I've taken a look at before but it perhaps is the updated version. Not too long ago I took a look at the AJAZZ AK873 which um, I believe was the first AJAZZ TKL I've taken a look at. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with AJAZZ as I have a few boards from them that I really like. And I also have some that I didn't. Now, most of the Ajax Nacodex, their X Nacodex, have been pretty good. Uh, but the last one that I got, the AK873, I did a review on it. I was not at all impressed. Um, it did come with clickies, and it's not that I hate clickies, but these were just anemic. They didn't even they sound like weak clickies, uh, and it just it just did not sound and feel as as it was worth I, I didn't think it was worth the listing price that they had for it um, which i believe was in the 60 dollars range for just a wire tkl now i did have somebody come to the comment section of my previous video and um we started having a conversation about are you sure you took a look at the latest one because they have refreshed it and i'm like i don't know and they're like well was yours wired or three mode i'm like it was wired only i didn't see a three mode like oh you need to take a look at the three mode it's built much better so it came across on my amazon feed a couple of weeks back and i decided all right let me give it a shot so today we are well not revisiting because it's not the same keyboard but we're taking a look at the ak73 three mode version now this does feel more substantial now it could just be the battery but it definitely feels heavier than i remember that other box feeling so Without further ado, let's go ahead and break these seals and get on in here. All right. Now, I believe the last time I took a look at it, it was more of a carbon sort of colorway. This is gray with green highlights. So, I don't recall if the other one had a dust cover, but I think it did. It does seem to be well packaged, but... Let me set the keyboard aside for right now. Just take a look at what we have in the box. We have an instruction manual. This is just your standardized rubber cable. And so they are PBT die sub. All right, and these are matte keys. These are ridiculously thick. Wow. These are 1.6 millimeters thick. That's not something you find on your average keyboard off the shelf. Here it seems to have a switch and keycap puller as well as some switches. And these are, uh, yep, they are AJAZ. They're an extremely light linear, I would guess in the 35 to 40 gram range. They sound like they're over lubed. I mean, I appreciate them being lubed, but I'd rather not be dealing with over switches yeah they're these are lubricated at least this the, the uh, stem is though there doesn't seem to be any lubrication on the spring the stem does seem to have You know, the stem does have some lubrication on it, which, as far as I can recall, is the first AJAZ switch I've seen with um, lubrication. They have no ping to speak of, though. They don't sound bad uh, for AJAZ switches. And I can already tell, uh, the other one I don't believe had... Um, spare switches but they were pingy and the click part of it was anemic so kind of uh, left one wanting all right and here we are with the ajaz ak873 three mode um, it definitely feels uh, much sturdier and heavier now i don't recall if the other one had a detachable shroud i think it did it has like little pads over the magnets i'm guessing that's uh, prevent it from clacking too loud or scratching 
the steel plate. So the keycaps, they're quite thick. Um, the font, I don't hate it. I don't love it because it's almost a little comic sans, but I don't hate it. Um, I do like keyboards that have the removable shroud, and I actually like that this keeps with the same color. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the CIY X77s, especially the silver one because you take the top off and it's black. Um, so, but I've, I've done some painting of a lot of the, uh, one of them I hydro dipped, the uh, shroud. But I like that it has the same color because then, you know, the colorway is going to look good either way. So, I got to say, so far, I'm finding this interesting. All right. This is an entirely different story than that other keyboard. This feels much more solid, and it sounds like a different keyboard altogether. So let's look around back real quick. We see that we have a pocket for the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. It's got the AJAZ branding. All right, and it feels like it does have a magnet in there, even though it has also basically some ridges that it's press fit. And then we can see the on and off switch. All right, I guess perhaps this is one of those keyboards that we don't get any RGB when we're in wireless, but I guess we'll figure that out. Let me plug it in real quick and see what these lights look like. Hmm. Plugged in, nothing's happening. We've got no lights. Caps lock does nothing. Scroll lock does nothing. Does it need to be turned on as well as plugged in? Now I got Bluetooth bouncing at me. not registering on my PC. It does seem to have uh, either an IPXC or PE foam pad on top of the PCB. And there is padding between the plate and the PCB. And there also appears to be padding down below. But why am I not getting any lights? I got a light there, the light by default off. It's not even responding. All right, I'm gonna just go try this out on my Windows PC. I will be right back. All right, so um, it's one of these odd keyboards that despite having a switch, you have to still put it into wired mode and here it's function tab. All right, so it appears that you need to do the function function tab in order to go into wired mode. So if you turn it on, it's going to try to connect. I thought I had a faulty board here for a second, but I personally am not a fan of three mode keyboards that require you to use a switch. If I plug it in and I'm starting to use it, then it's wired. It, it, it just, I mean, I get that they, I guess they're, they're like, well, if you want to plug it in to charge, but because I use keyboards more often wired than not, I expect it to work when I plug it in, not for it to still think that it's, it wants to be wireless. The plus side, I guess, would be that it probably allows you to charge while you're in wireless mode, but I don't know. That's neither here nor there. The RGBs are definitely not that bright. So we got off. One, two, three, and four. So it's got four levels of brightness. I'm used to five or even sometimes six or seven, but even at its brightest, it is not very bright at all. Um, the switches being the green housing. Although, I mean, like I said, this, this, this linear actually sounds pretty decent, but the housing kind of gives a mint color to everything so uh, I guess it goes along with the uh, 
the colorway, but if you go to change to rainbow colors, all the lights are just going to have that little bit of green tint to them. So, but turning just to the keyboard itself, um, I've got to say, for a stock keyboard, it sounds surprisingly well. Um, I'm go ahead and disconnect it so I don't accidentally hit something on. Oh, that stayed on for a little while longer than I expected it to. Oh, and it see, it's automatically gone into wireless mode when I unplug it. So, all right, it says connected, 84%. Oh, okay, we do have RGB and Bluetooth mode. So, I guess, man, that's probably a pretty good battery-saving feature that unless it's connected, it doesn't turn on the RGB. That way, it doesn't have to waste any battery power. Um, it just searches for a connection, and if it makes a connection... See, I can barely see the lights. Most keyboards I have, especially the shroud is off, so it's a floating design. I should be able to see the lights just fine, but that's not the case. Now it works. All right. That was a little odd. Didn't want to work at first, but now it works. All right. It's a bit of a quirky keyboard, uh, I'll say that much, as far as the functionality goes. And that's usually what bothers me about Ajaz. It's like, I don't know if they're going to a different manufacturer and just saying, let's do things differently, or if that manufacturer just does things differently, because I feel like a lot of Ajaz keyboards, they're not in line with what the market has, and they don't seem to function as we'd expect it to based on many other um, Chinese based keyboards. So that's what I just, I find uh, just quirky as hell um, that it's like that. But that being said, I can say just from initial impressions here that this setup definitely sounds much better than the, um, the wired one that I took a look at now. And it did come with the aviator cable, so that was $55.99 for the wired version. But it's $79.99 with a $20 coupon. So it's basically $4 more. If you'd like this keyboard and you want to get it, get this one instead of the other one. Because now why it's li listed as a Nacadex and an Ajaz one because the Nacadex also has the heavy industry one. Granted, that one has a $10 coupon, so it's $69.99. Whereas this one with the gray linear switch is $79.99 with $20 coupon, so $59.99. Um, so, yeah, this is, um, with the coupon, this is a much better buy. This one is definitely different. I mean, they've, they've done more to this one than they did to that age as AK. Um, I don't know how to differentiate them. They need to have models, uh, sub variants. Yeah, it just says AK873 RGB DIY. Well, it's not truly DIY because the switches and the keycaps, it comes pre-built. Um, it only has one set of feet, so you're only gonna get two different typing angles. Um, like I said, you have the um, Oh, the, actual, the indicator actually has an on and off indicator, zero and one. That's nice. I don't see that very often. Usually they just put in a switch and they're like, yes. Um, USB port is off center. Uh, it's probably to prevent having to flip any of the uh, LEDs over. I like that it's, I mean, there's really just no, uh, besides this little lip here, it's basically flush. So you're not going to have any issue with um, any cables, but yeah, this is definitely not a gasket mount. I don't see how they would do a gasket mount in this type of design since this is the plate and the plate is screwed in to the bottom of the case. Now, like I said before, we definitely have some uh, some nice dampening here. We have a, uh, a sheet. I, I'm gonna guess this is IPX sheet. And it even could be EVA. Uh, sitting above the PCB and we have a nice thick dense foam between the plate and the PCB as well as a dense foam down below the PCB as well. Now as far as these stabilizers go, what do we got? Alright, they are greased and if I'm not mistaken, let me take them out. 
first. How sturdy are they? Oh, they're actually pretty, pretty well attached. I'm actually surprised. I was expecting because these are the the milky stabilizers. Unfortunately, milkies tend to be not as good as the solid color ones. But yeah, they definitely put a good amount of grease on there, and there is no need to clip the feet. So, stabilizers are not that bad, although, huh, oh wow, I don't think this has a sheet, I think they actually individually installed the pad, oh wow, oh unless this is coming off the pad in order to make, but I don't know why they wouldn't pad it right there, there's the PCB, shouldn't there be padding there for the stab not to knock onto the PCB, I don't know. What do I know about keyboards, right? <laughs> I find that a little odd. Um, if I come back to this, I'm definitely going to be a little thorough when I do a teardown. There's actually some of that gunk. Whatever is the, the case foam down below, it's weird material. But let me see. Light ticking, but for stock keyboard, I'm, I'm honestly surprised. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, I wasn't expecting for it to sound as as. I wasn't really expecting this improved sound experience that this one brings to the table. Oh, there's the indicators. Never mind. Though honestly, they should be. If you're going to have a detachable shroud, they should be at the bottom. You know, they should be below and above. Uh, the lines on this are pretty simple. They're pretty straight. There's nothing... I don't know. There's nothing amazing about this design. But this iteration of it is more solid than I anticipated. It sounds much better than the wired only version, but I I would like like that for them to actually delineate a little bit clear between the different variations because they just call them all the AK873 and one should be the AK873W for wireless and maybe the AK873 you know wired pro just delineate a little bit better because I was honestly expecting just the same keyboard with a battery and, and three mode, but this is significantly better than the other keyboard. The construction of it, the dampening, the switches, it's much better and, it, and it's literally $4 more than the wired one. So if this is a keyboard that interests you, it has thick, uh, I believe this is MDA profile keycaps. They are die sub, but they, they are properly thick and they sound extremely they sound much better than I would have expected honestly the other version not and that's why I'm glad I took a look at this and I'm glad that I have viewers that speak out to me and let me know I did not know I thought there was only one version of it so taking a look at this one this is a much better value especially since we're talking only a handful of dollars in difference this one is much better built. Um, okay, it doesn't come with an aviator cable. Who cares? Um, that's aesthetics. And if you like that, fine. Go and buy one. But if you don't, you're not paying for it. Because I think that, and not that their aviator cable was amazing or anything, but obviously they spent more money on that aviator cable and they took it out of the budget of the keyboard because that keyboard wasn't even properly uh, dampened. So let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the AJAZ and Nakadex AK873. This is a three mode wireless TKL that includes 2.4 and Bluetooth 5.0. It is three and five pin hot swap compatible and the case is made from ABS and includes a magnetic removable shroud. 
it does come loaded with a jazz gray linear switch which is a lightweight linear of about 35 grams it also has 1.6 millimeter thick pbt die sub mda keycaps that includes windows and mac modifier keys this keyboard retails for $79.99 but is currently listed on amazon for $59.99 with a $20 off coupon. The stock weight of this keyboard is 1,012 grams and the battery is 2,500 milliamp hours. It has north facing RGB though it is quite dim. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21.5 millimeters while the back sits at 25.5 providing a default typing angle of three degrees. Raising the only feet included will take the back up to 37.5 millimeters, providing a typing angle of 9 degrees. All right, so today we took a look at the AJAZ AK873, um, the three mode version uh, that does include uh, Bluetooth 5.0, three slots, 2.4 gigahertz, and of course USB C. Now it does have the quirk that you have to not only turn it on, but you have to switch to wired mode if you want to use it. And that appears to be anytime you turn it on. So while I, I do think this keyboard sounds pretty good, and for the price it's not that bad, I personally would get frustrated because of all the little things. Now, if a keyboard's not gonna have RGB, that's fine. But if you're gonna have RGB, do it right. I don't think the RGB is done very well on this keyboard. It looks to be uh, older RGB modules. Um, I don't like the functionality. I don't want to have to turn on a keyboard if I just plug it in, but that's what you have to do. You have to turn it on. It automatically goes to wireless mode, even if you're plugged in, and you have to hit function tab to get it into wired mode. I primarily use my keyboards wired. That would just be frustrating, and if the battery when the battery dies, I think that's probably going to cause some issues as well. Um, it's a 2500 milliamp hour battery, which seems a little bit low nowadays, um, especially with the RGB that it has. Uh, the case design is, it's decent, but it doesn't stand out to me. It is very similar, in my opinion, to the CIY X77, though it does sound a little bit better stock, given that it has... Um, pre-lubed switches and much thicker keycaps but me personally as I prefer wired over wireless um, this keyboard I, I just there's a part of me that wants to keep it and work on it but I just know that those little quirks it's gonna it's gonna grate on me now if those things don't bother you well, I mean this keyboard is pretty decent uh, for an in stock TKL that I mean, if you just really care, you know, you like the, the colorway, you like the fonts. Like I said, I like the fonts, but then I see the, the M and I'm like, that looks almost exactly like an upside down W and it looks very comic sans. So now I personally prefer legends that cover the entire key, but these aren't SA. These are MDA, which is basically just a taller XDA. So if you like it and you don't want to do any modding, you just want a keyboard that sounds pretty good stock, well, this is going to be it. I mean, maybe a little tuning of the stabilizers. Um, I'm sure tape mod and the PE foam mod would actually add a bit more pop to it. But I personally just can't see the value for it. Personally, I mean, this is much better than the wired version. I mean, it's almost a completely different keyboard but it still has those quirks that Ajaz and Nakadex in, insist on including with their keyboards because, I mean, most keyboards don't function this way. Um, why they insist on doing this, I don't know. Um, are they trying to go against the grain or are they just not paying attention to what's going on in the market and they're not testing any other products? They're just like, oh, that looks nice, let's copy that. I mean, who knows what goes on in the design rooms for these companies, but... Uh, Ajaz just continues to make choices that I personally don't get. Anyway, um, not trying to excoriate this keyboard any more than it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the three mode AK873 from Nakadex and Ajaz. Um, I'd like to like to hear what you guys think. Should I keep it? Should I keep it and mod it and see 
how far I could take it, or is it a... Well, I'll look out for your comments. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>